I just have a short message as they uh, go back, and I think they're going to do a couple fun things, but I just have a short, uh, just a, an opportunity now that you're all here. Uh, you came for uh, some great songs and some great music, uh, but let's also get into God's Word. Um, Matthew chapter 19, verses 13 through 15. Let me read those and uh, maybe point out a couple things uh, anew to you this morning. Matthew chapter 19, starting in verse 13, says this. Is he going to be able to put those up there? Perfect. Then the children were brought to him, that he might lay hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked the people, but Jesus said, Let the little children come to me. And do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And he laid hands on them, and then he went away. In verse 15, we read, he laid hands on them, and he went away. Some translations say he departed from there. Where was Jesus going? Where's from there? We find the answer in Matthew chapter 20, verse 17. He was going to Jerusalem. What was he doing in Jerusalem? Well, we see the answer in Matthew chapter 20, verses 18 and 19. See, we are going to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. And he will deliver them over to the Gentiles and be mocked and flogged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. There was no higher priority of God than the cross. Can you think of him him having any other greater burden than going to Jerusalem to die for our sins? And yet, what does Jesus do before this time? Knowing that this laid on his head, he prioritized the children. He welcomed the little children. He laid hands on the children. He blessed them. He prayed over them. He prioritized giving time and care to children. Can you see why Matthew 19 is so important now? Jesus gives us a mandate to minister to the children. We are to place a high priority, like Jesus did, to the children. We are to follow his pattern in the church. Jesus is teaching in Matthew 19 to his disciples was the very thing that his disciples would do in the early church. Children were very important. Look at Acts chapter 2. It says, for the promises is for you and for your children. They learned the lesson from their Lord and Savior. So I just have a couple quick things from our passage this morning. In Matthew 19, 13 through 15, where Jesus says, let them come. Moments before he would go to Jerusalem to die on the cross, Jesus ministered to kids. And it shows us our responsibility. Number one, it is our responsibilities, moms and dad, and I'll even throw in you grandparents. It is our responsibility to share the gospel with our kids. This passage nowhere implies that Jesus was saving them at that moment. He merely 
prayed for them. He pronounced blessing upon them. This scene that Jesus is in teaches us, it teaches us parents to bring our children to Jesus. That means share the gospel with them. It's our responsibility. From the earliest passages of our Bibles, believers were challenged to share the things of God, share the things of heaven with the children. Deuteronomy 6, 5 says, You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk with them when you sit in your house. And then Paul would say in Ephesians chapter 6, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Parents, you should do everything in your power to ensure that your children are exposed to the gospel. The good news. I'm so thankful for our Sunday school teachers. They share the gospel every single time they are with your children. It is a priority of God's church. It is the very reason that you will hear me promote the gospel every single Sunday. Because whether we have another day on this earth, the most important thing you need to know is that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead. That's why we're here. And Jesus prioritizes that we must Share the gospel with our children. The next thing that I see is we are responsible to live out our faith in front of our children. By bringing our children to Jesus, by the disciples or the parents, the parents bringing their children to Jesus, these parents were telling their children that they saw something different in Jesus. Like these parents in Matthew's gospel, believers in our day have a responsibility of modeling Jesus to our kids. I must talk about my faith in Christ. I must live out my faith in Christ in front of my kids. If not, We promote a hypocrisy to our kids. That Jesus is only for Sunday. And not for our day to day living. We see in this passage that the kids saw something different in Jesus. So they brought him. And my question is do people, do your children see something different in you? Have you shared your own personal testimony of Jesus dying for your sins and how he has changed your life? We have a responsibility, parents and grandparents, to live out our faith in front of our kids. Make make much of Jesus in front of them. Show them that you are more passionate about Jesus than any hobby that you have. For it is the knowledge of Christ is what gives them eternal life. It is the greatest news they could ever hear. And so that leads me to my final point. From this passage, point your kids to Jesus. When these parents came to Jesus with their children, they were encouraging him, go to this guy. Go to Jesus. Continue to go to Jesus. Christian parents, in that verse, in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. The, The actual word for instruction is the word for encouragement. We ought to encourage our children to seek The Lord. Go to Jesus. 
One of the best things a follower of Jesus can do for their children is to love Jesus passionately. When we as mature adults love Jesus with a sincere devotion, it encourages our children to do the same. Some of my kids love the Indianapolis Colts. Some of them love the Cyclones. Some of my kids love basketball. Some of them love golf. Why? Because I love it. Because their mom loves it. Maybe not golf. Actually, she does like golf. Your kids will be pointed to the things that you love. Point them to Jesus. Point them to the passion that you have for Jesus. And you will fulfill the mandate that Jesus had to his disciples. Let the children come to me. Listen, if your life has gotten complicated by living in an adult world and you need some help today, go to Jesus. If you will come to him, you will find the grace that is needed to lead your children to him. While this message has been about children, this service has been about children, it's not only for children. If you have never been saved, rescued by the work of Jesus on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection, let me point you to Jesus today. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then God will save you. You must acknowledge that you are a sinner before a holy God and that your sin has separated you from God and Jesus came to bridge that gap. You must put your faith and trust in Him alone. Not Jesus plus you being at church. Not Jesus plus you are raised in a Christian home. Not Jesus plus anything. It's Jesus alone. And I am imploring you, Put your faith and trust in Jesus. For he says, come. Like the children. You must have that sort of faith. Thank you so much for being here. And may this be a challenge to all of us who are parents to point our kids to Jesus. Let's pray. Gracious and heavenly Father, I thank you for the reminder that this service isn't just a one-off. It is a daily instruction of your church in Altoona to point children, adults, everyone to you. Give us grace to do so. May you get all the glory for it's in your name I pray. And all God's people said...